Hey guys, welcome back. Epic day today. Today is the retro MTB show and shine. So it's all 90s bikes pre 2000. Um, the retro MTB SA Facebook page. Um, if you're not on that, get on there and uh, click a like and join the group. Um, once a year, we have a show and shine. Um, there's a pretty thriving rad scene in South Australia and it's only getting bigger and bigger. I think last year they had something like 36 bikes in total, including the museum's bikes. Uh, this year I think there's like 50 plus, which is epic. Um, it is the Retro MTB SA page in conjunction with the Oz Museum of MTB and a Bridge Road Breweries are a sponsor as well. I think there might be a couple of others, I'm not too sure who they are, I'll mention them later. Um, should be cool, there is also a game of bike, some bike event, so which will gain points towards what, what they've done, what Brad's done this year is Grandmaster Retro, which I think if you've got a bike that places well in a heap of categories and you get a lot of points, plus the game of bike, it all goes towards like the Grandmaster of, you know, wearing a flashy hat for the day. But um, either way, like, you know, like score, not score, who cares? I'm gonna see some awesome retro bikes. I'm gonna show them to you guys. It's gonna be rad. Uh, it's an absolute cracking day. Can't wait. There is everything from even a couple of little trials bikes like this Norco and this uh, Team Giant trials team as well. And resto mods as well. Some absolute killer downhill beasts. And it's got three brakes. Here's an ex Steve Pete bike as well. So it's got the TI link on it. Uh, so this is uh, one of Steve Pete's ex race bikes when he was up in Cairns for the 96 Worlds. Um, a couple of South Aussies are up there watching and they actually managed to get this bike off his mechanic and bring it back to SA. And the cool thing is that Krishan, the owner of this bike, actually raced it in the retro category last year at uh, Eagle Mountain Pike Park. So it would have been cool to take this thing out on the track for a spin. White Brothers. XTR in 950. And this is the Marin version of the Manitou suspension bike which basically has forks front and rear and this is one of the museum's bikes and it is a very very nice bike spooky dark side massive fan of those pineapple colored sub Mavic rims. Uh, this Scott Boulder is another favorite of mine. If it's one of those bikes that if you know what you're looking at when you look closely, 
all the little ring line on the bits and all the little anodized parts on it make this bike a supreme what i would call a quintessential 90s hardtail This is early Vetus as well, and if you look closely, what I was blown away is it's got hidden cables. Uh, it's got really cool lugs, and it's actually got pivots there, so it's actually a soft tail, so it's got a slight amount of suspension. Pretty cool. Also a pace from the UK with the square tubing, that's really cool. I like how they've milled little sections of the tubing as well, all in order to reduce weight. I didn't pick it up, this would be a pretty light bike and fairly rare as well. Yeah, this Rocky Mountain free rub bike is sick. It just reminds me of Wade Simmons flying through the North Shore in Canada. What a sick free rub bike and a sick era in mountain biking. But if there was one bike I was allowed to take home as a dream bike, it would have to be this Manitou FS. This thing, it may not ride so fantastic, but it looks amazing. Uh, if there was ever a more iconic DH bike from the late 90s, it was also the Missy Giovi, the Volvo Cannondale Downhill Super V. Uh, this bike was absolutely everywhere from the podiums to posters in the bike shops. Uh, another favourite of the show as well, this uh, Tequesta is another one of those bikes that if you know what you're looking at, if you look really closely, all the spec and the parts on this bike are absolutely top shelf. This is a ripper example. He's a um, man. Uh, Boy Bike Co, you may or may not have heard of it. It's actually a South Australian design and built bike by Gary Patterson, uh, the uh, CEO of Trail Skates and Pump Track Solutions. Uh, Gary is out there now building epic trails all around Australia. Is this Ken? Is this yours?
Oh, when I found this, I wanted it. They're not as bad as before, is it? It's gotta be done. Those hubs are minty. And those mm. hubs are mm. not a spin. That's not the original spec on it. No, but yeah, but, but it, it, would been, been, it would have actually had XT yeah. and LX. It yeah. It's just because yeah. it's a pro. It would have had four parts and it's a part of the board. But did you see these, this sort of wireframe mongoose long time just yeah. getting lower and lower and lower specs? For a year, and then I got sponsored by TGR for a year, and full size mount bike would fit me. Yeah. The frame was less than one of that's why they all broke. Yeah, because they were they were stupid light. And they broke, mate. But yeah. You see that Joshua? Yeah. Derek Fisher. That was a trick, wasn't it? Oh yeah. 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 Because they were just yeah. Yeah. Sold. Uh, this Avalanche LE is actually my own bike and I've lovingly restored and polished this baby back to its glory and she ended up getting second place in the best original. So I'm pretty stoked. Oh, that's quite common. A set of covers. Yeah. I've got a chain stay one. Yeah, that's probably why we went on. Out of the fucking <laughs> stanchions. Yeah. Never used to wear it though. And this 95 Avalanche is its older brother next door and um, this one ended up taking out a second place in Best Hardtail, uh, owned by Jason Lorna. And this gun metal grey backwards is actually my backwards and it actually started life as a gold backwards but through corrosion on the aluminium I ended up rubbing this frame back restoring it and changing the colour. It turned out pretty good. Uh, this cool giant ATX is actually owned by Brad, the organizer's young daughter, and she, along with her dad Brad, actually built this bike together. Pretty cool little family project. This is also Brad's Diamondback V-Link, which is also a very original, very nice bike. And this giant ATX is actually completely NOS, except for maybe the Mavic sub rims. But uh, I'll let Cam tell you all about it. So, yeah, talk. Oh my god, it's everything in it is brand spanking new. I'm gonna be honest with you the wheels, the Mavics, are four or five hundred kilometers old. The rest is absolutely new on stock. So where did you find the bike? Yeah. Essentially it was built by Ben, in, a bike called Ben in Melbourne. Yeah. He's pretty well known. Insta flying is his uh, Instagram handle. Does really high end stuff. This is so as high as you get. He found the frame in Seattle. Frame was on display in a Seattle bike shop in the 90s and then put in a box until Ben found it and then built the bike from around it. Yeah. And all the NOS XTR parts and the Maguras and all that. So you found the frame and built it with just yeah, NOS bits. Even down to the Tomac grips, the Johnny yeah. levers. So the only things I sourced for it was the seat post and the pedals. Yep. Which Ben had the pedals. Yeah. Tires. Tires have still got the little knobbly bits on it. Yeah, Tiago Psychos, he said that was like the rarest thing to find. Yeah, they are. They're near impossible. And yet they were specced just about on every bike back then too. Yeah. And then now you can't just never find it. Rapid Rise Derailer. Have you ridden it? Yeah, oh, you haven't oh, ridden it, have you? I've no, you won't ride it. Oh yeah, that's loose. Yeah. Not a problem. Oh,
and a cool 97 LTS one owned by Cam as well. And mm, those Hadley hubs doesn't get any better. And this is Jason Lorna's, uh, you could say, award-winning GT RTS. This thing took out the uh, top honours last year's show and shine. And uh, the spec and the attention to detail on this bike is almost unmatched. It's pretty sweet. Uh, so this red RTS and the LTS 2000 next to it, uh, these are both mine and a um, lot of auto salt and polishing have gone into these two babies to get them ready for the show. Uh, a few long nights in the shed and uh, it's good to see them out and shining. See if I did have to choose a favourite child, it'd have to be the LTS. Um, this definitely is my baby and it's cool to be able to own one now because they were pretty damn affordable, unaffordable when I was a young, young whippersnapper. So this Tomac uh, Primer was actually ridden by Laurie Denham in 2008-2009 on the world circuit. Um, Brad the organiser actually owns it now, but jeez um, I'd love to take this bike out for a ride. It looks fast just sitting there. Uh, this Craftworks DHR also belongs to Rex and he's done an absolutely amazing job on restoring this bike. It's almost a brand new bike. Uh, if you didn't know, Craftworks was actually designed and built here in South Australia. And uh, yeah, it's absolute downhill beast. Uh, back from the area when the M1 was a bike that was getting around the cups. Yeah, and giving him a call and abusing him. Uh, yes, Which, you know, I have been. Yeah, no. yeah. Yeah, oh, the bars are from a PSA. Uh, this DBR V10 uh, is also a good mate of mine's bike that I bought along. And this bike hasn't been restored at all. This bike is absolutely 100% original from the late 90s. He basically rode it for a few years and then stopped racing downhill and parked this thing up in the shed. And it's in amazing condition still. And it's actually for sale, so hit me up in the comments if you can. Uh, this GT DHI is also another pretty iconic bike, uh, had the iDrive on it. Uh, it's got a Saint uh, group set build now as well. Um, I just got it together in time for the show and shine. I uh, purchased it off of uh, Gary Patterson. And he tells me that back in the day, he got a few podiums on it and uh, managed to podium today on it. So cheers, Gary, this bike's still winning, mate. Uh, the Specialized Big Hit, a pretty iconic mullet bike from back in the day. Uh, very reminiscent of the uh, Intense M1 and those Marzocchi Monster T's are an absolute beast. With the, the retro... Run? No. no. Did you guys want to do a practice run? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Do we? Right, follow maybe. Me. Follow, follow, follow Rex. Yeah, follow Rexy. Start there. 
It's not a race race. Which, now which way we go? This way? Figure eight, you got yeah. Just clip in then you <laughs> Still a figure eight? Yep, and then from here up the hill. This is pretty tight. As you come past here, outside inside. Alright. And so and you replace it, do you? Yeah. That's your job, isn't it? Yeah. Alright. Oh! You've got to actually get it to stay. Because I was rushing to do another bite. Look at him go. Go Rex, pedal! <laughs> Need a cowbell. <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't just like it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Smoked it. And the stack hat. Oh. Out of the gate. Oh, oh. he touched it. That's a second. Oh. I don't trust these tyres, I'm going to wash out in the yard. Oh, oh. Yeah, ready, yeah, yeah, ready. Okay, yep, yeah, check, check. <laughs> okay, one, ready, yeah. set, go. Whoa. Oh, yeah. That's not fair. I can hear that. Go around this one. That's right. Should have put my seat down. Now what? Yep, okay, I'll, I'll do that. Is that right? Yep, no. Nah. Is that it? <laughs> Is that right? You've done it again. <laughs> oh. Yeah, boy. Oh. Did you guys get the fifty dollar note that I left pinned to my bike there?
So the Franken bike category is also known as the resto mod category, which is also uh, very popular. The only prerequisite is a pre-2000 frame, but otherwise that, sky's the limit on whatever parts you want to slap on it. How long have you had it for? Uh, three, three, four years. But I had to do that swing arm. Oh uh, yeah. Polish that. Just paint stripper. Yeah, you hit it yeah. with a paint stripper. Yeah. And then um, just steel wool. Yep. Yeah. Comes up I remember being 19 and seeing these and just going, holy crap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was Rexy? Yeah, yeah Rex. For the bike lap. Are you serious? Yeah, mate. Because <laughs> you got your bonus coin. The rest of you are all obviously very slow. <laughs> <laughs> it was super close. To the point that there was only like, it was even at a point and then we got one that just snuck ahead. So could we please have the Nigel with his DHI? Oh. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what a save! What a save! He's cut off at the bar now. <laughs> Cam, <laughs> up you go. Oh, really? Stop, stop pretending oh, really? you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're here this time, Donald, to accept your award. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the pub last time. Yeah. <laughs> He's got that bike now, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Telling me he wants it, but never, never. Cash hasn't made its way into my hand. I keep saying, more bikes Yeah, well done. Yeah, well done. In three different categories, as well as the score from the bike challenge, all add up. That gives the grandmaster score. So, starting off. Second place. So that was 241. 242. Nigel, 244.75. Fourth place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well done, Jason. Yeah, so well done, yeah, Jason. Thank you. Yeah, it'll be a wrap. Okay, so that is a wrap for the Retro SA Show and Shine for 2023. Uh, I hope I bought you some good retro goodness. Um, pretty stoked with uh, taking out a few category uh, placings, which was great. Um, pretty wrapped. Uh, congratulations to uh, Jason on the Grandmaster Retro and all of the other guys that won things as well. A lot of blood, sweat, and beers put into the bikes. Uh, thank you, Brad, for uh, putting it all together, and Joe and Krishan for the museum for the support as well. Uh, without you guys, it wouldn't be the thriving retro scene that we've got here in SA. So on that, yeah, like uh, Retro MTB SA's Facebook page on the socials, uh, also the Museum of MTV. Check out their uh, Instagram as well. And um, give this video a thumbs up or uh, subscribe. Uh, really appreciate it, it means a lot and uh, helps support the channel. So uh, yeah, keeping it retro and thanks for watching.